Ashley, you have a question? Yes, I just had a really quick follow-up question for your one division. That's what I was going to ask about is one division. Um, Dick, the Dick Van Dyke show is one of my very favorite shows. I was kind of like Wanda. I grew up watching it and loving Dick Van Dyke and Mary Tyler Moore. So that's part of why I really liked that segment in your episode. And I'm not going to take this answer as gospel, but do you feel like there are any other Dick Van Dykes out there and Mary Tyler Moore's? Like if they redid this episode in this series, who would you cast and who would you say, yeah, they could fill those shoes? Or do you think there isn't anybody like them? Gosh, that's a good, hard question to answer. <laughs> I, I'm sure there are people like that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking specifically, the, the, what was so great, see, it's interesting. As time went on, in my, this is just my opinion, mm -hmm. um, television in general, became more formulaic as time went on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, when you, the, the thing about Dick Van Dyke is when I, we had to study it by the way, to do that. Yes. We reached, yeah. watched hours of it to, to really think about it. Even though it's played for laughs and it's played with a kind of a light touch, it's very realistic. Mm -hmm. And you actually, I mean, if you look at it with a critical eye, they try hard to make the characters as real as they can. Right. Um, you know, that, that's, that's uh, instead of just making them a trope about something or other. Mm -hmm. um, I, I certainly think there are actors who can fulfill that, but it's, it has to be a confluence of the writing and the actor and the production in general. Yeah. Uh, to make that really, uh, you know, sing. Yeah. So I'm, sure, I'm, sure it's, I'm sure it could be done. I think the quality of television nowadays, especially with the massive amount of television that's being produced, mm -hmm. um, is quite impressive. I mean, not all of it, but quite a bit of it is. Um, dramedy has become much more uh, of, a, of a kind of a real thing than it ever was back in those days. Um, things that are both funny and also kind of uh, dramatically engaging and sometimes sad and sometimes serious. Mm -hmm. um, but I certainly think there are people that could handle it. I can't tell you off the top of my head who I think has that light touch. Yeah. Uh, that you need. Yeah. But, but I, I, I'll certainly, I'll certainly will think about it. Um, I, I couldn't think of anyone. So I thought I would, I would like, I would be interested in your opinion. I just feel like they were a perfect storm of talent and writing and production and chemistry. And it was just a perfect, sitcom almost feels like the wrong word it was just a perfect show to me yeah i agree with you and i think there are other shows of that era that have mm -hmm. a similar quality andy griffith has a similar quality mm -hmm. to the completely different kind of show but the the, the the point is when you see a show like and this is my I, I, okay this is my sort of theory of drama in general or of movies of television in general the characters are always the thing that brings you back mm -hmm. The plot is essentially a device on which to hang the characters. That's the way I look at it. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't mean that plotting is easy. It's not easy. Right. But the thing that sticks in your mind, I mean, when I think of The Godfather, for example, which is a great film, or I think of Boogie Nights, which is my idea of a great film, or many other great films, Tre uh, Treasure of Sierra Madre, um, the plot points are, I would be hard-pressed to actually be accurate and tell you what the whole plot is. Right. But I remember the characters and what they do vividly. Right. So, you know, when you go see the Andy Griffith show, so why do people not like Andy Griffith? Well, the warmth of that character in that situation. And, uh, you know, Bill Bixby in that same era, uh, similar quality to, to me anyway. You, you, you miss the, it's the personality of those characters yeah. that you want to tune in all the time. Right. You couldn't actually say what your favorite episode is. You just, it's, you would watch them read the phone book. You would watch them be right. those characters because that's what you're tuning in for is them. Although the plot does help, but it's mostly, you want to see them. You want to see Andy and Barney and you want to, it doesn't matter what they do. You just want to see them do something. Right. It, likewise, Star Trek, people, you know, I, yeah. there are particular episodes 
that show things off more dramatically or kind of uh, more demonstrably, but it's still the characters and what they do, mm -hmm. that's the thing that's the real draw, I think. Mm -hmm. I agree. It's interesting, Fred, you kind of reminded me, um, and I'll get to you, Jonathan, you'll be next. Uh, you kind of reminded me in that a little bit of the vibe of like some of the character actors from back then, especially like a Richard Deacon, obviously from the from the Dick Van Dyke show where those those blustery bosses, uh, you know, where you where you you had the physical presence, but you also had a way of delivering your lines. And, and it just recalled the just the acting style just recalled that era as well. Yeah, I mean, I don't I think it was I think my resemblance to Richard Deacon was was well noted by the people who cast me. Uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, we were trying to we were we were trying to keep it sort of flying as they did, but also kind of keep it, you know, as real as we could within the confines of doing something that was obviously very far outside the realm of reality. Um, you know, also that doing something like that, you you try not you try and isolate yourself from the pressure of it being. You know, it was Marvel's uh, kind of introduction mm -hmm. on Disney Plus. Mm -hmm. um, it was a big money project on which a lot was riding. So you you try and kind of divorce yourself from that uh, those expectations mentally, but you can't completely. You know, you you, you feel it. Um, but yeah, I, I think we were trying to, to, to stylistically pay homage to those people, but also, to also trying to do it, keep it, keeping it, you know, kind of real, as real as, as real as we could under the, under those circumstances. Yeah. You truly captured something there that, that I think you, you, you wanted to capture. Mm -hmm.